Everybody, please join me in welcoming Ken Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So welcome. We, we are on the edge, although they're, they're, they're not nervous. Uh, they're, they are doing some of the most innovative things. Chris Mayer, Elisa Bowen. We will get to a great conversation in about five minutes here. So what I wanted to do to introduce uh, us today, because it is the beginning of 2012, is talk about 10 big trends here. So tablets. It is funny, I remember two years ago at IIS, uh, we did the regular IIS conference, and at the end of the conference, Steve Jobs was introducing the tablet. And we had it on both screens. And people said, mm, big iPhone, remember that? Two years ago, big iPhone? I don't see why anybody would want to use that. And other people said, oh, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So my contention is, is that, that it is the missing link. Uh, it is the missing link, maybe the first of several, we can hope, uh, between old news world in reading and in advertising. The numbers are astounding. So we have 100 million of these. These are tablets overall. Uh, obviously, the iPad as the leader sold so far. And we think another 100 million will be sold this year. So 200 million in two years from just almost exactly two years ago today. Significantly, it's the first digital replacement. My contention is if you read, it's like, uh, it's like having, uh, having been a, a cigarette smoker in the 50s, you would have a cigarette lighter. If you read in 2012, you have a tablet. Study came out yesterday, 29% of American adults have tablets. News business is shrinking, but it's still huge. 134 billion, this is worldwide. 2005, 87 billion is my estimate for outsell for last year. Huge loss, one third of the business of newspapers lost, and about 50% in the US. Where past content wants to be free, that old saying which is falling into antiquity and now content wants a fee. The Times has been a clear modern leader, really building on what the journal did a long time ago, back in 2000, 2001, 2002, and Financial Times. But the Times has spawned an entire new movement of what people have called paid content. It's really digital circulation. And one-tenth of US dailies, and a lot in Europe as well, are switching to pay models. Number four, all access is the dominant business model. Very simple. And very importantly, this isn't a newspaper model by itself, not a magazine model, although we see Time and Hearst and Condé Nast uh, picking up on it as well. It's HBO, it's Comcast. Very simple idea. Pay us once, this moderate low price. We'll get it to you wherever you are, on a smartphone, a tablet and then we can price up after we have converted you to all access. Number five, digital ads surpass print in the US. That will happen this year. It's already happened in uh, UK and Japan. Big numbers, when you look at these industries that we deal with, newspapers are down, gonna be down another single digit uh, percentage this year. Magazines are essentially flat, consumer magazines. Broadcast flat with the addition of elections. Uh, and super PACs, cable is up, and of course digital is way up. Looks like 15.5% plus compounded growth over a four year period. Six, GAFA, GAFA, Google, Apple, Facebook and Amazon, we have a panel on that in, in a little later this afternoon. Huge imprint on the publishing world, everything that we do. I ran this number for a report that I did for Outsell on GAFA, and it was, it was fascinating. They came out within, uh, and of course this was a snapshot in time, but those four companies market cap about $400 billion, the entire newspaper industry worldwide, $400 billion. Google, and compared to that little red down there, that's Gannett, second largest news company in the world, largest in the US. Number seven, new competition built on low cost models. AOL is our best example of that. And uh, I haven't run this past Ariana. I don't know if she'd like it, but she is off in Europe. She's starting video channels. She is doing everything that you can do built on a smart, low cost model. 
Brand authority is morphine. We sense this all the time. Those of us who remember Walter Cronkite, and here he is using paper mache, I believe, to demonstrate the moon project. And now, John Stewart. <laughs> Unbelievable impact in our world. Number nine, 4G is reinforcing the video forward era. We will talk about WSJ Live. Uh, is this newspaper or is it a television uh, offering or is it something else? Debuted this year and I think it's a remarkable product. Number 10, new technologies are enabling new strategies. And when we look at uh, Boston Globe, very interesting business models overall, similar to the times in some way, different in other ways. And the use of technology to get out and make that an all access product is very significant as well. So I just wanted to set it up there and go over and I will start a conversation with Chris and Elisa. Chris is one of the few people who is a computer science major in college. Does anybody else know any publishers who are com computer science people in the newspaper business? First one, the first one I've ever met. That would explain why I'm the only one ever at the <laughs> reunions. <laughs> That's probably it. Like one hour reunions? Yeah, what? exactly. It's a, small, it's a small targeted marketing list. Chris is a veteran of the Boston Globe through the IT side, through circulation, through a lot of the business functions, and uh, be, has become publisher in, uh, when was it, last year? 10. Yeah, in 2010 now. Elisa uh, Bowen is uh, one of the savviest business people in the digital world. Uh, we first started talking when she was at Reuters and then went over the Wall Street Journal two years ago. One. One year ago. You know, internet time. One year ago. And we see announcement after announcement coming out of the Wall Street Journal, including WSJ Live. So uh, we'll get into a conversation uh, with each other and uh, get your questions ready and we'll, we'll go to questions about 10 minutes before the break. Let me ask you about the tablet first. So when we look at the tablet, uh, the numbers are amazing. This was 29% adult use in the U.S. according to Pew uh, yesterday. Uh, is it more of an opportunity? I know you're both grappling with it. You're, you're figuring out where it fits in your plans. Is it more of an opportunity or more of a threat? Because it is plainly both depending on adoption time, how advertising works, all that kind of stuff. How do you, how do you think about that question? Uh, no question or no doubt in my mind that it's a massive opportunity.